Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Everyone can hear me well? All right, my name is Carrington Hill. I am the co-founder of Sound Collide. I've been producing music for the past four years, and we began Sound Collide when my team and I, we decided we wanted to create our first album. So what did we do? We spent $12,000 over the course of two years to create an album that we never released. Our biggest problems that we faced were distance and logistics. These, both, these two things prevented us from meeting up consecutive, consistently, and actually, 30% of our budget was allocated to travel expenses alone. But we're not the only ones that face this problem. There's almost 60 million other artists that face this exact same problem. So let's go ahead and bring your attention to the Billboard Top 10. 70% of the top 10 songs are collaborations. These are represented by the highlights. Now, if you take a look at the total credits, a credit simply means how many people it took to complete one song. As you can see, it ranges anywhere from three to 17 people to, 17 people to work on one song. These people come from all over the world. They come from Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. Collaboration is absolutely essential to making music. So what's the problem? So the supply chain to make music is broken up into three roles. A producer, someone like myself, who makes the beat, a recording artist, someone like Beyonce, who sings over the beat, and then an audio engineer, someone that makes edits and modifies the track to ensure sound quality. So how do we bring these three roles together in a consistent and sustainable way? Our solution here at SoundCollide is a collaborative online marketplace that brings users together regardless of location and allows them to record in real time. So I'd love to bring your attention to the dash. We have the dashboard of a user in Atlanta and a dashboard of a user here in Dallas. While using our application, they're able to record in real time, live, together, regardless of location. You can think of this similar to Google Docs, but for recording. So I'd love to bring your attention. So as a, as a music producer, I go into SoundCollide, and I'm looking for artists to work with. I'm always searching for artists to work with. Let's say I come across a profile like hers. Here's a little something for your ears. Happy New Year. She sounds a little bit better than I do. So I reach out to her and I say, I would love to work with you. She responds, great. I charge $40 to compensate or to work with. So I compensate her. And this is where we hit the studio tab in the bottom right hand corner. Now this is where the magic happens. We are recording together live in real time. Now this is huge because this has never been done before. This has never been done before. So once we work on that track and we complete it, it is then uploaded to our dashboard. And now we can hit the studio tab in the top right hand corner and now we have access to audio engineers and music studios all over the world. Now this is huge because music is very regional based. So if I'm passionate about hip hop and I live in Alaska, well, there's really not too many audio engineers that can give me that hip hop sound. But here with SoundCollide, we are able to connect that artist in Alaska to an audio engineer in Atlanta to give him that final, that final sound and that sound he's looking for. So, if you're in the mood, let's say you just got dumped by your girlfriend and you're feeling a little down and you wanna make a blues track, we can connect you with an audio or music studio in Nashville to give you that blues sound. Feeling a little spicy, you wanna make a little salsa track, well we can go ahead and connect you to an audio engineer in Mexico to give you that, that sound. <laughs> So, oh, excuse me, got a little excited there. So once that song is sent back from the audio engineer with the final edits and get it, and it's ready for, for uh, radio, we take a look, it's uploaded to our dashboard and we can get listened to it. <laughs> Sounds pretty smooth, right? So here at SoundCollide, we are creating a vertical integration of music production. This is what's so impactful and groundbreaking. We're revolutionizing the way music is made. So with this vertical integration, we're cutting cost and time by 66%. This means that that album that we worked on, it took two years to complete, would have been completed in eight months. But that's not the only thing. We're using blockchain technology to generate smart contracts to give artists proof that they are the original creators of this content. Now this is huge because when I produce music and I upload it to platforms like Spotify or to YouTube, 
They tell me that they cannot pay me for my music because they have no proof that I'm the rightful owner of this content. Well, now with these smart contracts, I can give these platforms proof and claim the money that is owed to me. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the revenue model. We charge $20 for a virtual studio session. We collect 20% off of any peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So when I reached out to her and she said she charges $40, we collect 20% off of that. And then we also collect a fee to generate these smart contracts. Now that pricing point is still being determined as we're working with our partners for the licensing model. Now I'd love to bring your attention to the music tech industry. Now, as you see, this is a perceptual map of all the competitors in the market. The vertical axis represents the level of performance. The horizontal axis really represents how collaborative these platforms are. Now, I'd love to bring your attention to the two icons outlined in the red box. These are two of our competitors that have tried to provide the similar service uh, to us, but they both failed for the exact same reason. Both users have to have the exact same application in order to collaborate. That's why we at SoundCollide elected to go through the browser so that we can capture all players in the market. So when I, if I wanted to use their service, I would have to throw away my recording software and purchase theirs, but that's no longer the case. Now, let's look at the market size. The audio production industry is a $5.4 billion industry. And what you see here is a map that represents the percentage of recording services in the United States. For example, California represents 27% of all recording services in the USA. But what's so impactful about SoundCollide is all the gray states. We're connecting all of the gray states to the same opportunity and resources that the highlighted states have. But we're also connecting all of the highlighted states to recording artists all over the world. Now this generates a new source of revenue for these music studios as they can, can they're no longer limited to their physical location in their physical space. Now let's talk about our user acquisition strategy. If you can see the green pin on there, that represents our office in Atlanta. And all of the blue pins represent all recording studios, universities, and major record labels within a 30 mile radius of our office. Now we have relationships with 80% of all these facilities. Now I'd love to bring your attention to one of, our, uh, one of our biggest relationships we have, and that's with the record label Quality Control. Now I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with our largest group, the Migos, but I know everyone in the back has definitely heard of the Migos. They have just broken a world record for reaching over one billion streams worldwide, but not just that. We are also personal friends with the owners of No Dusk. They are an audio platform, or a music production platform, that provides audio samples and loops for producers like myself. Now they have over 100,000 subscribers on their platform. Now let's crunch some numbers. I would love to bring your attention to, well, let me first start off. Our two major expenses here at SoundCollide are data storage and server fees. Now I'd love to bring your attention to the jump in revenue from year one to year two. Now we at SoundCollide, we are offering our recording services for free for the first year to entice users to our website. Now year two, we're able to collect on all three streams of revenue. So let's go ahead and talk about some of our milestones we've had here at SoundCollide. Our partnership with Jamber, they are developing the blockchain technology and we are integrating that software into our platform to generate those smart contracts. But I'd really like to bring your attention to their partnership with Microsoft. They have given us, they have granted us over $360,000 worth of cloud storage credits. Now, we at SoundCollide have been fortunate enough to raise over $30,000 within the last three weeks from two investors, and then an additional $3,000 from our users. Now, you're asking, how do we have users? Well, we did a proof of concept at the largest music conference in Georgia, where we, asked, we had artists and users use our proof of concept, and they donated over $30,000 after using our, or $3,000, excuse me, after using our uh, software. But don't just take my word for it. Listen to her. I, bro, if you don't have it, like, you legitimately sleeping on it. Like, the, the concept is crazy. I mean, I work with artists all across the world, and it's super hard just to, you know, meet with them. Okay, we got to go to the studio. I got to send you my vocals and my files. But when I put on the headphones, the dude was like, the engineer was right there. And then he set the tracks, and then he was like, okay, just go ahead. I'm going to press play and record. And I did it, and I heard it back. 
and it was dope. So, like, I'm in love. I'm so, I'm on it. <laughs> exactly, it's dope, right? So, our team here at SoundCloud, we're a very unique team. Robert and I, we have over 10 years experience in the music industry. And as a team, we've developed three music applications, one of which was accredited by the National Science Foundation. Now, another part of our competitive advantage is our mentors. Our mentors combined have over 60 years of SaaS product development and product management. Now, there's two individuals up here that I'd love to bring your attention to, Clarence Welton and Ben Patterson. Now, although you may not be familiar with Clarence Welton, you have most definitely heard his work, and I know all of you have heard his work. He's the engineer for the late and great Prince. Now, ben, Clar ben Patterson, he's a very interesting individual. He's a venture capitalist who specializes in marketplaces, and he was also a part of a very famous uh, rock band in the 90s, the Smashing Pumpkins. So, we ask you, we're asking for this money because we would be able to work on SoundCollide full-time throughout the summer, and the director from that largest conference that I had mentioned earlier, he's asked us to have our beta launch in October at this conference. And with this money, we'd be able to bring on two strong junior-level back-end developers to help continue to, uh, to allow us to take advantage of that blessing and that opportunity that we have. The remaining fees will be used for marketing and for legal. So, we at SoundCollide are asking you, to join us. Our values lie in giving artists ownership, opportunity, and equity in their music portfolio. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I'm married to a musician. Uh, 10 CDs, not albums anymore. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of, uh, one of them moved away. And that created, uh, a, you know, a hard time for them to get together and record and work something out. And then the drummer had to figure out when he could leave his family to come and work on the music. And then they'd disappear in a studio and they'd have to cram all of this recording into a very short period of time because everybody needed to get back to their real jobs. Um, when I read your business plan, I, I thought it was interesting, but now I'm understanding it more with your presentation. So thanks for a very well thought out presentation. Thank you. Um, can you, and maybe I'm the only one that doesn't know this, but what exactly is blockchain technology? Okay, so blockchain technology is simply a ledger. So what we're doing here with the blockchain, te blockchain technology is we're taking the user's information and we're embedding that into the audio file. So whether that music is recycled, resampled, they still have proof that they are the original creators of this content. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. All right. I think I have a couple other questions, but I, I think I'm good right now. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm with Homeland Security, so we talk blockchain all the time, Thank every you. day. Um, other than the country of Estonia using blockchain, I love it being used in the music industry. Just the fact that you can protect their content, even if somebody slices it into YouTube, it's fantastic. I'm sure musicians can deeply appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, so Joseph Gordon-Levitt, they have that, is it called Hit Record? I'm actually not familiar with Look that. Look into that one. It's, it's a creator community, but one of his business models, and it might be something for you to explore, one of their business models is that they'll, they'll team up on the site and they'll create something and his website takes a cut of whatever they group create. So that might be something interesting to have like an album from the SoundCloud or SoundCloud group. That's a, be that's a cool. pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So they'll, they, I, I think hit record, they'll even write books together. Okay. And then they'll publish books as a group. So, so those are definitely things that we could do in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, look into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Cool. Nice job. Thank you so much. I, th I think it's a really great idea and it'll help a lot of musicians and budding musicians as well. Mm -hmm. Can you give me just a little bit of, of information on how the quality of the sound is controlled? And for instance, uh, you might have a singer in one place that they're not in a studio, right? So how do you control what they're singing to and overlaying? So music, a lot of times people will equate the quality of music with equipment. When actuality, quality of music 
is e equal is, um, is determined by the editing. So when we connect those artists in Wisconsin or across the country with the audio engineers, the engineer takes care of all of the editing. So the equipment does not e is, not, um, is not the only factor when ensuring uh, the best sound quality. Do you need more elaboration? Do you need me to elaborate a little more? Well, I'm just thinking of somebody uh, sort of making, singing to their phone or whatever mm -hmm. they're going to use to, to then send on to the audio <coughs> studio and you have to merge that and I guess they have to be in some kind of quiet background or is there special equipment that these people need to have? So an audio engineer, they actually work out, they traditionally work out of music studios. Right, yeah. So that equipment is there. And so let's say I sing into my phone. I mean, I don't have the prettiest voice, but he can edit it and want his computer to make it sound like freaking Beyonce. So all of the, all of the editing and all of the sound quality is really controlled by the audio engineer. And so that's what we're doing here is we're connecting those artists in states where they can't get those top notch audio engineers where we're being able, we're gonna connect them, we are connecting them to those engineers that are able to make that, um, that radio quality, give them that radio quality. If you could do that for podcasting, I would use it often. Never even thought about it. You, yeah, we might have to. I, you on the team? My, you got a couple of ideas. My hamster wheel is going crazy up here. Marketing mind. But I, uh, yeah, I, I'm based in D.C. and New York and Texas, and I have uh, friends that we want to podcast together, and it's just a pain in the butt to find technology Absolutely. that we can utilize together. And if we could hire an engineer for a low cost to make us sound better than we actually yeah, are. Like you're in the same room? Yeah. So oh, what's beautiful about incredible. our revenue model is that we're an a la carte service. So you would actually be able to mm -hmm. send your MP3 files to those audio engineers and they could clean up you guys' vocals. Done. Think of boring, uh, boring people like me. We would still Not use it. Boring. You got some good ideas. <laughs> yeah. You got some good ideas. Really good idea. I remembered my, uh, my question. So yes, it seems to me like um, uh, you it seems very community based. Yes, ma'am. Right? It's like a community center for musicians and artists. And then you've got that engineer component. Yes, ma'am. So, your go to market plan focusing in Atlanta, I guess I'm just wondering why you're focusing in that area with these large organizations when it seems like the social play here would be huge because everyone who's singing on YouTube is literally in their room by themselves with a guitar and a mic and you know a, a video camera that ever, they're already on their devices and they're already being very social so it just seems like you wouldn't need a geographic plan that it should be based on an interest level plan and then you could YouTube it and get it out to the masses Great point. So what we're doing here is we, our user acquisition cost is $15. Now that is very intentional because we believe with the collaborative nature of our platform and the strong network and the relationships that we have already developed, we have a great opportunity to create that strong network effect on our platform. And I'd also like to bring to your attention that we have a meeting next week with one of the greatest producers in history, Jermaine Dupri, and his vision for us is to get our application in every music studio in California. And then also our partners at Jamber, they're based out of Nashville. So they're also getting our, um, they're helping us get our platform in those, uh, those studios in Nashville as well. So, and even with our relationships that we have, Music is very relationship based. So when we have these form these relationships in Atlanta, these people know people all across the world. So we have we are creating that great network effect around the globe, around the globe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carrington, so you talked about uh, Pro Tools earlier. Yes, sir. Um, and, and in your business business plan, you talked about it being enterprise based software. Yes, sir. Can you explain that in the mu music industry? Um, uh, if you're moving in that. I assume the ultimate goal is to move into as many music studios as you can. Isn't that a displacement strategy for against Pro Tools? Great question. So Pro Tools, we still want audio engineers to use Pro Tools because of the high level of performance they are. We're simply bringing the two users together. So we don't want to get rid of Pro Tools because it's a phenomenal okay. tool. We want to connect artists that don't have access to Pro Tools because it is an enterprise um, software, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. 
So we want to connect those users, that, like myself, who can't afford 600, a $600 program, mm -hmm. we want to connect them to an audio engineer who already has that software. So you're a value add to the, to the value stream. Pardon me? So you're a value add to the existing value stream right exactly. now. Not a, not, exactly. You're not, no, you're not here displacing them. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. With that, please join me in thanking SoundSlide. Thank you all so much. I want to say this has been an absolute blessing, and I appreciate everyone here. I really do. So thank you from on behalf of my team and myself. Thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful presentation.